Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Recent New Relic Digital Intelligence Platform Updates. Uh, well, you'll hear from Aaron Johnson, Product Manager at New Relic, as well as Devin Cheevers for Product Marketing at New Relic. Before we start, just a few housekeeping items. Today's webinar will be recorded and a recording will be sent to you shortly after the presentation. There will be time reserved at the end for questions, so be sure to place any questions you might have in the questions panel of the GoToWebinar control panel. Lastly, there will be a brief survey at the end, so please take the time to give us your feedback. Now I will hand it off to Devin Cheevers, Product Marketing at New Relic. Thanks, Robin, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Today we're going to give you a brief overview of New Relic, and then we'll spend the majority of our time going through some of the highlights of our winter 2017 launch. This will include updates, and we'll also have a demo from Aaron Johnson, one of our VPs of product management. We'll then end with some thoughts on how we're thinking about leveraging machine learning and our unique scale to provide intelligent recommendations and tools across our platform to make your job easier. Hopefully, we'll also have time for questions. Please make sure to submit your questions in the GoToWebinar questions panel. So let's get started. Here at New Relic, our goal is to be the first best place to look to understand your digital business. We were founded in 2007 and went public in 2014. We're operating at a very large scale, ingesting over 1 billion metrics per minute which is actually order of magnitude larger than Twitter or Instagram, and certainly larger than any of our point solution competitors. We're proud of, over, of the over 14,000 paid customers we have with companies like GE, and uh, sorry, and Fortune 10 companies like GE, and brands that you interact with every day like News Corp, Dunkin' Donuts, and others. We also have a wealth of disruptive companies that are changing the very structure of their industries. Companies like Airbnb, Groupon, and Major League Baseball Advanced Media. These companies choose New Relic because our platform is easy, scalable, secure, and delivers rapid time to value. We're also proud of the, our history of leadership and innovation in this space and how we're rapidly becoming the enterprise standard for digital intelligence. So what makes us different? First, it's our full stack instrumentation. We have the ability to monitor everything from the front end experience all the way down to the infrastructure. And this is increasingly critical as the complex nature of today's modern apps and architecture um, presents unique challenges. And also the idea of a digital first customer. For most brands, delivering a fantastic experience via digital is critical to their business success. And without full stack visibility, they're hindered in how they deliver that experience. The second piece is the visibility and data on your biggest days. We call these digital moments of truth. This could be a Black Friday or a Super Bowl Sunday, or even an election day, like Gannett, one of our customers who on election day had um, a dynamic infrastructure uh, with huge spikes as people woke up and wanted to find out what was happening on, on election day. In fact, they had over 170 deploys on election night, and um, we have a great story there from our future stack last year, which you can check out on our blog. And finally, what makes us different, we believe, is real-time analytics for everyone. According to Gardner, the average APM deployment has 2.3 users, but with our focus on ease of use and analytics for everyone, Customers like Adobe, GE, and News Corp have hundreds of users within their companies using New Relic every day. So full stack instrumentation is critical as we talked about. Um, scaling to your biggest day is also in incredibly important and we believe we have the scale and platform to allow companies to do this. And real time analytics. This is something that we're gonna hit on pretty hard early on in the demo. Uh, we believe that our analytics products and dashboards and metrics help a uh, wealth of personas within your company really understand what's happening um, with the performance and experience of your digital uh, applications. And this all really comes together in the digital intelligence platform with um, products across your uh, customer experience, uh, applications, and infrastructure 
uh, with New Relic Insights, which provides, provides metric and dashboards and our alerting product. And this is all powered by our modern cloud plat platform. And this helps companies like Major League Baseball really deliver a fantastic experience for their customers and empowers their developers to experiment and work fast without compromising the quality of the experience for their fans. So that's New Relic in a nutshell, the first best place to look to understand your digital business. So let's move on to 2017 update, our winter launch, and what we talked about a few weeks ago when we announced this. Our first theme was more power for DevOps teams with better dashboards and better alerting. And I'm going to walk through briefly some of the highlights of the features we've rolled out over the last few months, and then Aaron's going to jump into an in-product demo that highlights some of the power. So starting off, 16 in November, a, a slew of feature updates to our alerting platform. Some of these are now generally available, including advanced Java alerting, dynamic targeting, and uh, enhancements to how you alert from our newest product, New Relic Infrastructure. We're going to demo briefly the dynamic targeting feature today in the in-product demo. Another two features that we talked about at FutureStack was uh, dynamic baselines and NRQL, alert, NL, NRQL alerting, two incredibly powerful features that we think we're uniquely positioned to deliver. Both these, feature will, these features will demo today, and while they're still in preview, they're coming soon. We'll then jump into some of the updates that we've released to our dashboarding capability via New Relic Insights. This includes uh, the time picker, which was incredibly well received, allowing you to drill into specific incident time windows on all your charts within a dashboard. Copyable dashboards and add to insights makes it that much easier to leverage institutional knowledge, copy dashboards, and add nearly any chart from any of New Relic's products to a dashboard. And we'll also talk about the Metric Explorer, which again is incredibly powerful and allows you to see all your data in one place. Now you can look at both metric data and event data in Insights, and we'll talk briefly about that in the demo. One thing we previewed in our announcement for Winter 2017 launch is company-wide dashboards. This is going to provide our customers with a master view of multiple accounts that they may have with New Relic. We believe this will help larger enterprises who have a, a number of accounts easily visualize data from any account and share it across the org. So that's a brief introduction to some of the uh, updates we've made to dashboarding and alerting. I'm going to add, hand it off to AJ now to walk through some demos for these features. Great, thanks Devin. So we are going to uh, walk through a number of the uh, of the features that Devin just talked about. The first one we're going to talk about uh, is the uh, the new uh, technology that we've rolled out to allow for dynamic baselining uh, across the uh, the different products that we have. So um, you'll start here. Uh, you uh, uh, four four baselines. You'll uh, need to go and uh, create a condition. So uh, we'll add a condition to uh, to Devin's policy. Uh, you can see that uh, you can select a you know a standard um, static threshold metric, or you can select a baseline metric. So we'll select a, a an application uh, metric baseline, and then go and uh, and we need to go and figure out which uh, which particular application we want to go and do uh, do a baseline for. So we're going to use the storefront here, uh, which is part of our demo environment, and then the uh, the. The, there's a number of things that are really, really interesting on this page. So, uh, first thing to call out is that um, you know we're looking by default here for like the last two days of data, but we can expand it out for seven days. And our baselines um, are are relatively unique in that we're not doing baselines on hourly metrics per se. Uh, we believe that there's can be you know minute to minute swings. And so, when you look at seven days right here, one of the things you'll see um, it, you won't you won't see, but you, you might see a little bit is. You'll notice as I mouse over, you can see the range there. There's a, a small little uh, a small little chart that pops up in the in the bottom right that shows that um, just for that specific 10-minute um, time period, uh, uh, a number of and in fact, I believe there's over 60 different um, 60 different um, uh, baseline metrics in there. Uh, and so on this particular chart, we're actually uh, doing a baseline over 10,000 data points. 
Uh, and so, um, uh, so our, our baselines are not you know, hourly. Uh, what would happen if you have an hourly baseline is it's usually uh, pretty chunky. Uh, you'll see these nice big flat lines, um, and, uh, and that is typically not all that helpful. But uh, let's look actually at, at uh, web application or uh, web transaction throughput. Uh, and so you can see here, uh, we've uh, obviously figured out um, some of the seasonality in the data. So um, you know, probably on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, the traffic's a little bit lower. Uh, during the business day uh, with a storefront or maybe at night as folks come home on their on their tablets and start shopping, um, the traffic goes up. So our baselines figure that out. One of the things that we've tried to do is uh, not just put out the standard, you know, really easy to do uh, baselines with a uh, standard deviation, but we've um, we've attempted to uh, to do a number of things that uh, help our customers. Like our customers expect that when they use New Relic that there's going to be some magic involved, that there are going to be things that aren't just, uh, you know, standard uh, standard tools. So um, instead of shipping and, and forcing our customers to understand seasonality and to understand standard deviations, you have to make you know, 10 decisions when you set up a baseline. We've tried to make it really, really simple. You either can say, you know what, I would, I, I'm hypersensitive to any changes or any fluctuations in the throughput um, or any of the metrics involved in my application, and so I would like to see uh, more violations. And you can see as you drag the slider, we'll actually then go highlight for you the various places that you may have, you would receive a violation here. So again, uh, 10,000 data points, you can see in really small where we would have, you, you would have had a violation there. We'll highlight here at the bottom uh, the, the, uh, the time periods when you would have gotten one. Uh, or you can say, you know what, uh, you know, I, I wanna know when something's wrong, but it has to be, you know, pretty wrong. Uh, and so we can, uh, we'll, we can uh, scroll down here to like, you know, have fewer violations, have it be less sensitive. Um, and so, uh, so uh, yeah, so, uh, Lots, of, lots and lots of data, uh, 10,000 data points, uh, more, way more granular than hourly. Uh, we try and take uh, all of the, um, all, all of the decisions, all hard decisions that, um, that you have to do uh, with baselines and, uh, and make it easy. The last thing that's not obvious here, um, that is, uh, that is really, really powerful, is that uh, when you set this up, we will actually then go and use um, what we call ensemble learning, or what's commonly called ensemble learning. Uh, so when we're actually at um, uh, every every 10 minutes or so, we're running uh, uh, all uh, six different algorithms against this to to figure out and predict what the best baseline is. So, given you decide how sensitive you want it, we'll figure out uh, using a variety of algorithms which is which is producing the best and most accurate baseline for your application. So that's just an example of of how uh, over the course of this year that we're going to be rolling out a number of things that are more than just uh, standard, um, you know, easy uh, algorithms that you can apply to your data, but actually uh, attempting to do uh, really applied uh, machine learning to uh, to make our, our customers have better experiences, uh, hopefully have uh, less errors, and when they do have an error that or um, an anomaly that it's it's actually it's actually real. So the second thing that I want to show uh, that uh, Devin mentioned briefly was um, our, our the new feature that we're rolling out that uh, allows customers to do um, to do uh, alerting on top of their their Nurkle queries. Uh, and so, uh, sorry, first. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to cancel out of this one. I'm going to go back and do the same thing again. Create a condition uh, here. Instead of uh, selecting a single product, I'm going to select Nurkle, uh, and then uh, I'm going to. I wrote a query here, uh, you know, Devin and I, we, we slaved over these queries, and, uh, and so I have a query already, already queued up. Uh, that this query, uh, oops, this query uh, does a couple things that's interesting. One is, uh, you'll notice I'm using the standard uh, uh, transaction event type. So this is, you know, any HTTP request that hits uh, any one of your applications uh, will actually have a record of that in, um, in NRDB. Um, and what a number of our, our customers do that uh, we think is especially powerful and useful is we'll actually add custom attributes to those, some of those individual transactions. So what we've done here is we've actually um, uh, written up a, uh, we've added a custom attribute to a set of the transactions. So whenever through our, our demo storefront, and you can see here, whenever somebody goes to the, basically to the, you know, to create an order, um, we'll add the item price or the, like the checkout price, right, of, of, the, uh, of the order. And so uh, we can then do a query. We can graph um, the the sum of the item prices from all the transactions over um, you know minute, hourly, uh, day long periods. And so here um, I th we're looking at uh, I believe we're looking at, at minute level data. And um, and what we what we want to be able to do is you know if uh, Devin and I are are you know e-commerce veterans, we want to make sure that um, 
you know, that the that there's no fraudulent orders, that there's not somebody coming through and ordering, you know, let's say ten thousand item, you know, um, ten thousand dollars of of stuff. That would be abnormal. And so we'll set up a, a, a query here, uh, and we can say, you know what, um, if during any any three minute uh, or any any period, um, if uh, if we see more than uh, let's just say let's say five thousand, if the query re, uh, returns a value above, uh, let's do five thousand. Then, uh, then you know, we'd want to get it. We'd want to get some kind of uh, alert sent to us. And so again, this is uh, the kind of combining a number of really, really neat things about New Relic. One, um, adding those custom attributes to your to your uh, to any of the events that flow into NRDB is an especially powerful way to uh, to uh, uh, make use of New Relic. Um, and then um, to be able to do alerting on top of that, we think is especially powerful and especially useful. Um, and we've got a lot of examples uh, at offline that um, Devin and others can share uh, if you have questions about how customers do that or, um, or what ways you can make use of that. So the second, second demo we want to do is uh, also, uh, also using this uh, exact same technology. And we'll go back to another uh, one of our lovingly hand curated uh, uh, queries that we've we slaved over for, for many months. Uh, and uh, we've worked, right. And and we are going to do the same thing. Um, so we've got a different query this time. And this one is a uh, this is a new uh, new type of event that our mobile product is, is rolling out. So anytime there's any type of uh, re uh, an error from the a mobile device, uh, we'll actually record that. And um, and so you can see that you know we get the the type of the error, or uh, we get the HTTP status code, or we get the URL that they were requesting. And so um, what we're doing here is we're actually showing, uh, hey, uh, there are, you know, end users might be, see all kinds of errors, right? They might be uh, all of a sudden going to a dead zone. They might, um, um, I don't know, the, you know, website might be down, but uh, what variety of, but we're really, really concerned about, um, about login errors. We think that's, you know, really a, a block or two engagement, and uh, there's, you know, zero reasons that we should ever have a login error. Uh, and so we've, we've, uh, We've written a query such that we can say, you know, we only want um, uh, HTTP errors, um, and if it's a 401, that's that's kind of standard. That's that's normal actually for uh, for a login. You you know, 401s are actually saying you're not you're not authorized. Um, and so if it's any kind of non 401 error, and we're on the login page, uh, then we want to uh, we want to be able to get a um, uh, get it get an alert for that. Uh, and so again, um, we are. Uh, Sorry, I had a brain buffer there. Um, we are using again the uh, the NERC alerting capabilities um, and doing things that uh, you know you, you probably can't do because uh, with with other tools that do aggregate metrics. These are this is the raw data you can see, and you could actually go down to say, you know what, if the query returns anything above zero, um, so if there's a single error uh, re re um, uh, related to logins, then uh, then go ahead and shoot me an alert. So uh, now I'm going to transition over to uh, 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 back to uh, to show another one of the features that uh, that Devin mentioned. Uh, this one's called uh, this one's called dynamic targeting. Uh, so dynamic targeting uh, we rolled out as part of our our, our infrastructure product. You can go in today to uh, the infrastructure product and you can say uh, create an alert policy and target you know a, a specific set of labels or a single label and say you know anytime uh, anything labeled with production and storefront. Uh, and the disk I/O goes above, you know, uh, a certain percentage, then send me an alert. Um, a number of our customers have requested the exact same thing, except for applications. So a common use case is they say, "Hey, we've we've got different tiers of applications. We have, you know, tier three applications that, um, you know, come down for maintenance windows on a regular basis, or are of a different level of criticality to the business. But we have a set of tier one applications that are highly critical to the business that never can go down, that should have very, very low error rates, um, and that we want to uh, automatically have the exact same uh, alerting conditions applied to all of them. So that any, if any new application, um, it comes up and is labeled with tier one, um, or you know whatever your label is, that an alert condition would automatically be, be applied to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, run through a demo of, of how that would work here. Um, so I can I can go in uh, to uh, 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 back to the the exact same screen. I select an application metric, um, and I'll go ahead and uh, select some entities. And instead of selecting an individual uh, application or a set of applications, I'm going to use a label. Uh, and so you can see here, I can select the tier. And instead of said tier one, we said tier front end. Um, so you can imagine any of your uh, your front end things. Uh, you know, you don't want your end users seeing any errors whatsoever. 
And then we'll go ahead and define a threshold and we'll say error percentage has a percentage above um, 0.5. We have a really low threshold uh, or a really yeah, low threshold for um, any kind of errors. We want to know about them right away. Um, and then if I click create condition here, what would happen is that um, any application that got spun up. So if you have uh, you know, new microservices that are coming online, new front end applications that are coming online, you never have to worry about going back to go and, and add them to the list. Um, they're automatically added and they're automatically be monitored with this particular um, uh, condition. So those are the those are the uh, those are three of the um, or three or four of the uh, demos of the most some of the more alerting uh, interesting alerting uh, scenarios. So now we're going to skip over to um, so some of the work that we uh, that we've done here on insights. So with with insights, the first thing that we kind of want to we want to uh, sit on is um, is the the new work that we've done, and this has been out for uh, for a couple months, um, but uh, but it. I think the the uh, the nuance is lost on a lot of folks. So there's there's two really really rich types of data that we have inside of New Relic. We have um, both event data, the raw data, like I talked about before. Every single HTTP transaction that comes into your application, you get a record of here um, in our in our data store. You can write really rich queries against those. You get the same thing for errors, and now mobile uh, mobile request errors. You get it for page views. You get it for synthetics checks. Um, but then we also have metric data. So this is aggregate data that all of the different agents also send up. And so um, uh, one of the things that we wanted to be able to show was the, the fact that you, know, you, can, you can combine these on, on different dashboards. You can combine event data and metric data. So uh, we're, we'll have an inception-like moment here, and we'll actually show our Insights product uh, showing uh, the performance of how Insights is actually working. Uh, so we have a, a, a dashboard here uh, that has it's combined. It's a combination of uh, both uh, metric data. You can see here, um, this is a, a metric chart that's showing our, our staging, um, our staging instances for insights, and uh, and you know in a variety of places we also have um, we also have event data. So like I mentioned earlier, any single HTTP error that hits uh, you know the mobile as I showed previously, or any HTTP error that we got, um, or not even HTTP error actually like a server side application error uh, that we got here inside of the insights um, product, we can see that. And this is a this is a query. You can see the, the query we're faceting by the, the type of the error that is, um, and uh, and and you can see those uh, the, those graphs over time. Uh, the the real power that we we think about this is uh, is one is uh, as as Devin mentioned, we can go in and we can now show, hey, uh, I want to be able to see the same thing, but I'd like to see it over a six hour time window rather than uh, what many of these were looking at was uh, you know a day or um, or 24 hours. Um, but one of the things that one of the ways that our teams use this is um, is that they actually use, uh, especially this this uh, these two charts right here, is our teams as they roll out to production, they want an uh, you know up to the minute view of what's going. So you do a deployment out to production, you want to be able to see almost immediately is anything wrong. Uh, and so they they hone in here. And so if you, you know I wanted to um, let's say they did that and I wanted to roll out and say you know the last uh, last 30 minutes. Uh, now we can get like a you know a pretty clear up to the uh, up to the last minute. This is uh, 1027 right now, so we're looking at 1025 and almost 1026. So the data swung through pretty quickly. Uh, so another another thing that's that's interesting uh, in here, as I mentioned, you can look at the uh, you can look at the actual event data. So you know if I wanted to, I could I could then go drill in uh, like many customers do uh, that that really really get insights. But many customers don't realize you could say, great, not only can I look at the, you know, the error class, um, but I could say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm really interested in, um, or I really want to know if um, my friend, uh, uh, if my friend Devin has viewed the site at all. So I could go in and I can say uh, user equals uh, Devin, and I can see all of the page views that Devin has done here uh, on, on, um, on, on production. So uh -huh. I can see all against insights, this is everything here. But then I could also see, oh, you know what, let's make sure that uh, Devin, because he's super important, let's also make sure that he hasn't he hasn't experienced any issues. Good, there's no errors here whatsoever. But if I wanted to, I could add, you know, add this um, uh, better, maybe uh, add, uh, add this one. Maybe I cared about uh, Devin's page views. I could add this uh, as a chart to, uh, to our to insights. So you can see you can see your you know aggregated event data but you can also see the individual things so if you wanted to you could say you know save this uh, save the last or show me the last 10 errors that have happened so I want to actually see the raw data we think that's really really powerful with insights um, and, uh, and and a, it's great to be able to combine your event and metric data on a single chart 
Yep. Yep. Thanks, AJ. Um, we're going to jump back into the presentation for the next section of our talk. And we're getting some great questions, I see, via the question panel, so please keep them coming. Uh, we have about 30 minutes left, and so we're definitely going to try and keep some time to answer those questions that I see coming in. So we've talked a bit about how we've made updates to dashboarding and alerting. And we believe that those new features are especially useful for uh, operations and development, development teams. And the second theme that we talked about in our winter 2017 launch was around this idea of expanded visibility and control. So as you may remember from earlier on in our platform uh, diagram, we have in the middle there, we have three kind of core components in terms of what we're instrumenting. So we're instrumenting the front end experience, the customer experience of our users via the mobile browser agent, and then we also have our synthetics product. And um, then we're also instrumenting applications via APM and uh, our nearest product infrastructure at the infra infrastructure level. So we're going to jump into a couple of the highlights of the recent updates to th this part of our, our platform. So from a customer experience pr perspective, we made some significant improvements through our mobile product. And the two things we're going to highlight today are our crash analysis feature, which combines the power of our analytics engine from Insights with the uh, deep instrumentation that we're performing within your mobile application. And uh, you know, the real value here we see is that you're experiencing significant amount of crashes if you have an application running in the wild at a high, you have a high amount of users. So being able to figure out which are the most impactful crashes and how do you actually fix them faster, crash analysis is gonna let you do that. And even the demo that AJ gave, um, being able to drill, drill down to a specific user, that of course would be super useful if you had a valuable user or someone that was complaining to support or left a review. What if you go and drill down at that specific name and see their device and what the crash they experience. Um, that's incredibly powerful. Uh, we also actually highlighted this in our knuckle alerting uh, demo, which is um, the ability to alert off this new default error type, which is mobile request error. And again, uh, the power of the platform, if you're building a mobile application, you also need to be able to understand as a team the performance of the services that power it, the back-end services that power it. Often it's a separate team, and more importantly, your customer or your user doesn't care if the login is down because of some back-end API. They only experience the failure in their application, and that means poor reviews, lower retention. So the ability to see that data in the R dashboarding tool and being able to query and chart it and of course alert off it we believe is incredibly powerful uh, in terms of browser and synthetics we uh, really recently released we had some blog posts up I think last week around our source maps feature which is going to give you uh, deeper visibility into JavaScript errors if you're minifying your code something we had a lot of, we heard a lot of demand from for our customers so we're excited to roll that out uh, as generally available and in our announcement we also previewed synthetics maintenance windows which is going to make your life easier if you have specific time windows where you don't want your synthetic monitor to run. Uh, diving into APM, a core part of our company and our product, we have an incredible amount of updates to, to our APM product. These are just three highlights. Uh, we're going to, we're, we may actually have time to demo this, so we're going to go into a bit of a demo into the instance level data store visibility that we now provide our APM customers. Uh, and hitting on the theme of flexibility, we recently re released some updates to our Java uh, APM agent, improving that API and allowing you to better tailor and integrate your agent to the agent to your specific needs. And um, for our .NET users, we announced support error analytics support for .NET applications. And again, error analytics um, hits on this theme that you've heard throughout this call, which is the power of analytics. Um, everywhere and uh, the power of using our analytics capability and event and metric data to be able to better analyze and resolve errors in your .NET application. Um, and then infrastructure, our newest product, product that we're incredibly excited about, we announced uh, the general availability in November at our FutureStack conference in San Francisco. Um, there was a blog post that went out yesterday around some updates were made to the alerting capability something that was in high demand, the ability to alert off host not reporting. Um, we also have some other advanced alerting metrics that you can now alert off, such as process down and fullest disk. And obviously a key part of um, how we're supporting our customers is with tighter integration into um, 
cloud vendors such as AWS. So we have some unique out-of-the-box support for our Lambda customers with New York Infrastructure. And um, just a shout out for the infrastructure team, they're going to have a webinar in April that we have up, which um, will be a deeper dive into these two updates. So I'm going to hand it back to Aaron to go through uh, a couple things, the, the, the data store instance level um, visibility, and then if we have time, he'll run you through a, a quicker review of our infrastructure product. Um, so over to AJ. Great. Thanks again, Devin. So we're going to look here at um, <clears throat> one of the features that, uh, that Devin mentions was, uh, was service maps uh, and some new um, some new things that we added to service maps specifically around databases. So even even before we uh, we go into the demo of it, I think it's really really important for us to talk about how uh, how critical service maps are uh, to us as a company um, and how critical that we think that they are going to be um, for our customers already today, um, but even more so in the future as the as the, the as many many of our customers are moving to microservices and containers um, and away from big monolithic stacks. That means that. Uh, the connectivity uh, and the connectedness of, of their applications is not, you know, method to method in a single Java application, but is more uh, HTTP connection or uh, or database connection or uh, connected by a queue or connected to a storage system. And so, service maps are the way that um, that our, our customers and and uh, we're building tools to help them uh, be able to debug um, uh, problems and see problems uh, between their applications and between the various services that they're using. So, uh, so we're going to um, start here, and um, and one of the one of the uh, really nice things that uh, New Relic has out of the box is this ability to go and actually discover everything about your environment, um, assuming that you've dropped in uh, your your New Relic language agents. So I'll click on Discover Environment here for our, our demo. Uh, and very quickly, it goes out and says, Hey, here's all the applications that you have, um, and bigger, it says, Here's how they're actually connected. Here's here's what's talking to what, uh, and you can see all the way from uh, excuse me, from the front end, you can see uh, the browser, how we're monitoring the storefront, all the way uh, over to, um, you know, a bunch of microservices that run uh, behind the scenes, um, and even the uh, the different storage um, and uh, and maybe caching systems that they're using. Uh, and this is a really, you know, contrived, simple example, but you can imagine in a, in a, large, a large enterprise with hundreds of applications and many, many um, infrastructure services and, um, and cloud services that this map can get really, really complex. Um, but so the, one of the features that uh, we've we've added uh, is the ability for uh, you to visualize not just that um, you know a single application is talking to a database, but actually that that database is actually uh, has many things on it. So uh, lots of our customers, you know, will have um, you know really big uh, you know Oracle rack systems where you have maybe 50 or 100 databases on a single server. Um, and if you're the you know you are the owner of the e-commerce advertising service. You want to know, um, you know, what other things potentially are on are on uh, the same database server that I'm on, and so uh, you can see here that uh, you know we've got uh, we're representing um, everything about this uh, this particular MySQL uh, instance. It has seven different applications that are connected to it, um, or, uh, and um, and if we go in here, we can actually see both the uh, the, the database instances themselves, um, and then also uh, the applications that are talking to them. Uh, and so you can see, you know, everything's pretty red here. But you know, if you if we uncheck this and kind of look at, um, you know, this one that that had a pretty good spike there. Uh, but you can see the individual performance of applications against them. I mean, the large majority of these look like they're in the, you know, the you know 10 to 20 millisecond range. But uh, this one, for whatever reason, had a pretty good spike on it. So again, what we're trying to do is give customers at a glance, uh, especially if they're on the operation side, an at a glance view of what could be impacting um, you know, uh, this, this particular application uh, going into an alerting state. Uh, and so these data store instances we think are, are a really, really powerful way of doing that. The, yeah, keep going. Yep, and so uh, one of the second, the other things we'll show um, is, uh, you know, on the infrastructure side, there was a, a couple features that, um, uh, that that Devin mentioned. Uh, one of the one of the more powerful ones um, we believe is the fact that we're capturing uh, across uh, in here in our demo environment, we've got 500 different hosts, uh, and for every one of those hosts, we're not just capturing, you know, the basic CPU, uh, disk, uh, memory uh, metrics, but we're capturing every um, every five seconds, we're capturing all of the processes that are on that box. And so if I want to hone in here and go to, uh, let's say, um, I'm going to go to our, uh, our Elasticsearch uh, production cluster. It's only six hosts. 
but you can see all the processes that are running and I can scroll down here um, you know there's there's going to be um, you know many hundreds of processes uh, that are running um, and so this is really useful uh, for uh, for you know someone in ops maybe to visualize uh, what why a particular um, uh, process or what particular process might be causing a problem um, but what a lot of our customers want is they want the ability to then go say okay that's all great but what I really want to do is I want to have an alert on that so we've got two different types of um, uh, process level alerting. We've got both process metrics. So you can say, you know what, um, for those those sets of, of labels, I would like to uh, look at um, just the uh, just the Tomcat process on them. And I want to make sure I want to I want to alert if the CPU for the Tomcat process across any of those instances goes above 20. That's pretty interesting. Um, but another another thing that's really interesting is a lot of our customers want the ability to say, hey, I want to know if uh, across those that same set of, of currently six nodes, but um, it may in the future be, you know, 35. Uh, we have, I had to talk to a customer just the other day that they say they go from, sometimes they go from 75 to 750 EC2 hosts uh, in the course of minutes as they spike up and down. And so our, our, our out of the box, um, this dynamic targeting will work just like that. If you bring up, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a couple hundred hosts in minutes, uh, this would change from six hosts to 750. Um, and so you can say here, I want to make sure that across uh, all of those um, all of those nodes, be it six or 750, I want to make sure that uh, that the uh, let's see the the Java process is running. Um, and I want an alert when you know no processes are running, or at least one um, uh, is running more than exactly a few. Then so this gives you a ton of flexibility to do not just uh, metric alerting but also um, process alerting. Um, and process running, uh, and we can do a much uh, the similar thing um, is, uh, and Devin mentioned this as well, uh, for host not reporting. I want to know uh, again for any of these six hosts. I want to know if any one of those six hosts has not been reporting in five minutes and send me an alert. So uh, that's an example of some of the new things with with infrastructure and with our with our service map technology. And I'm going to hand it back to Devin to walk through some other things. Thanks, Aaron. That was great. Um, so we, we hit on a couple of the key themes that we think encapsulate a lot of the recent updates to the New Relic platform. So dashboard and alerting, significant improvements there that are going to give you um, more flexibility, more power. Uh, in terms of that full stack instrumentation, you've seen some pretty significant improvements to how we're expanding our visibility and control over what you're measuring. And the last section of this, uh, the prepared remarks is some discussion around um, like where do we think New Relic's going in terms of machine learning, intelligence, even calling it artificial intelligence, which I know is a loaded term. We wanted to briefly describe some of our thoughts here and where we see some of our unique differentiation as a, as a platform. So Aaron's going to hit on some of these. I'm going to go back to full screen. And then um, I think we'll have some time to hit on some of those questions which I've seen come through. So over to Aaron to just mention and talk about some of these bigger themes around intelligence and machine learning. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Evan. So uh, I mentioned this earlier and talked, uh, talked briefly about uh, what we're doing with baselines and how, uh, how we, what we believe is that uh, it shouldn't just be that we ship uh, algorithms and have our customers have to go figure it out and spend a bunch of time configuring standard deviations and configuring seasonality. A lot of the times, either if you're in uh, operations or you're on the DevOps team, First of all, you don't know. You don't know what the standard deviation should be. You don't know how many errors you're going to be able to, you, you want to get, and, and uh, you don't know what the seasonality is. You need someone to help you go figure out what that is. Uh, the second part of that that's, that's hard is that a lot of the times you might think you know, uh, and then something's going to change. Uh, and so our, we both uh, the tools that we're building around baselines are, are meant to address both of those things. We should uh, be able to help you figure out intelligently uh, what the seasonality is and give you visual indicators about like what the um, uh, what the standard deviation, what the sensitivity should be. Um, but then over time, uh, it can't just be a static, great, you know, you set blindly set, uh, you know, a, a standard Holt Winters uh, baseline generation to go. We need to change it. So we have those ensemble algorithms that are coming along and are, are, are constantly trying to figure out what the best baseline is for your particular metric. Um, and that's just the beginning of what we're trying to do. So the second, the second thing that we're going to be able to bring is uh, uh, that same type of technology, but also to our event data. So those queries that uh, Devin and I showed earlier, where we're able to look at uh, your uh, your item price, the checkout price, or the you know the the amount that somebody purchased in a checkout process, I had to set a static threshold for that and say, hey, if it's above five thousand, let me know. But 
what you really want is you want the ability to have uh, a system automatically determine for you uh, what the baseline is, and then um, you'd be able to create an alert uh, on top of that event data for be it checkout uh, item price or be it uh, you know mobile request errors like we talked about, um, or any of any other number of things that um, that you are doing maybe using custom attributes or or just the out of the box <clears throat> um, events that we ship. Uh, one of the other examples of of something that uh, that we're looking looking to do this year is um, uh, you can imagine and. and uh, Devin had a, a quick slide on it that talked about how uh, the .NET team has recently just shipped the ability to do error analytics. And I showed that earlier with uh, the Insights dashboard where we were able to see, uh, you know, the different types of errors as they happen and over, and over time. Uh, so, you know, a typical use case is uh, you'll set up an alert for something like that. You'd see, hey, error rate spiked above some percentage. If it was a Tier 1 application that you used dynamic targeting for, maybe you'd set it as 0.5%. You get an alert. Hopefully it's not at 2 a.m., but it might be at 2 a.m., and as an engineer, uh, I spent 10 years previous to this job at New Relic, as an engineer, sometimes getting woken up at 2 a.m., you bang your head on the table at 2 a.m. trying to ask what changed, what's different. And so one of the things that uh, we're looking to, uh, uh, looking to shift this year is the ability to, uh, we're, we, the name won't stick, um, but it's this notion of being able to find the thing that's different or the thing that's weird. And so uh, you can imagine uh, going to, uh, let's say, the error page. So you've got an alert for error rate spiking. Going to the error page, and uh, right now we ship a bunch of really great tools for you to be able to kind of try and figure that, that the answer to that question out yourself. Uh, for error rate, uh, was there a massive increase in throughput? Um, was there a particular, you know, account that maybe is having that problem. Maybe it was Devin. Maybe Devin was doing something really weird in the checkout process and he was the one that was causing all the errors. Our weird finder or our facet suggestion can actually look at uh, the historical event data and then given the historical event data, go back and say, you know what, the, this particular set of attributes is different um, historically and this is a potential likely thing that you should look at. This is weird. This is different. Uh, and so, that's one example of, of uh, something that we'll be looking to do uh, with this team uh, around intelligence and around uh, throughout the entire uh, platform being able to bring um, suggestions, bring um, uh, um, uh, baselines. Uh, and so a another example uh, for baselines in particular that's really important, I mentioned how uh, on the service maps themselves, the, the, the keys, you know, it's, it's certainly really helpful to be able to see the different entities on your map, see your application and your database. Um, and, and one of the things that's minimized in the current view is the connections between those things, the error, the arrows that show this application is talking to this database. Uh, and those arrows actually are laden with really, really rich and useful information that it turns out would be really helpful to have baselines on. So as an example, you wake up at 2 a.m. and your e-commerce application is dying. Um, you ask, uh, what is different? What is, what is abnormal? And so uh, because we have that rich data with our language agents about things that are coming into it, the, through the, you know, the what, whatever is upstream from it, maybe something has changed upstream, we can put a baseline and we will be putting baselines on uh, the metrics, the, the incoming throughput metrics, and also the downstream metrics. So things I'm talking to a database or to a cache or to uh, a storage system. Those are, are uh, rich things that should and will have baselines and they'll be vis vis visibly shown on the service map, not just that, hey, this particular e-commerce application is red because it has an alert, but this particular connection coming into that thing is different. This is red, this is abnormal. And so when we say baselines on on uh, our smart service and health maps, that's what we're talking about here. So that's uh, a really quick, I know we have a short amount of time here left, um, a really quick overview of some of the things we're looking to bring uh, via our, our intelligence platform. Great. Thanks, AJ. Um, so one of the other things that we talked about in this vein is Project Seymour. We talked about it at Future Stack, um, and some of, you can go and check it out on our website, um, and this is somewhere where this comes to life, uh, these ideas and these themes, and some of the advantages that we think we have in terms of a platform you know, our unique scale, um, fast delivery model. Um, so we're super excited about this, delivering real value and uh, real actionability across our platform with some of these techniques. Uh, I, so that's uh, some most of the prepared remarks. Here's a recap of what we talked about. Uh, we've had some great updates to our dashboarding and insights product alerting as well. We walked through some of those demos. Uh, with our customer experience, ATM and infrastructure monitoring, again, significant improvements to the visibility and control, and then also some fantastic ideas and um, already implementing um, some machine learning and predictive analytics to our entire platform to make your job easier. Uh, 
So the, you can go check out newrelic.com forward slash what's new for more of these updates and more specific uh, uh, blog posts and release notes for some of the features that may be of interest to you. And um, for continue to continue to follow us, please check out the blog. We have a monthly newsletter, and obviously we have more upcoming webinars. I know infrastructure is definitely a product that a lot of our customers are interested in. So on April 5th, um, so pretty soon we're going to have another webinar, which is going to be a deep dive into some of those new features that we highlighted with infrastructure with the infrastructure team. We're very excited about our Future Stack series, global series this year. The next two events are actually in Europe. So. 24th of May in London and then the 22nd of June in Berlin. You can check out our events section on our website to find out more. And um, next quarter we're going to have our next uh, uh, quarterly launch where we're going to wrap up um, and roll up some of the features under um, some of the opinions we have about the marketplace. So um, we're excited about that. And let's jump into questions. And I think uh, Robin, yeah, Robin, you're going to give us some of the questions from the from the audience. Yeah, so we got a good amount of questions. Um, I want to start with um, the question about um, m monitoring capabilities that Insights limited to only seven days. Is there a planned solution to leverage uh, the captured metrics in a longer term report, e.g. monthly transaction totals, um, broken down by months or for the last 12 months? Because that um, would be considered to be helpful. Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic question. I think uh, I'll rephrase it as the way that we were thinking about it, about it internally is I think uh, the question is, hey, you've got all this really really rich event data, um, and it's great to be able to make reports out of it for you know seven to you know seven or eight days uh, that we give you. But a lot of the times uh, you don't necessarily need to see you know all of let's say or be able to fast it through every single one of Devin's HTTP requests over 12 months, but you would like to see. Um, some reports generated out of that that might last for 12 months. Um, and if, if that's the case, that's actually one of the uh, one of the critical things that we're looking at actually building this year is the ability for you to go in and say, hey, uh, I'm looking at this dashboard. There's a lot of event data on this. Um, I only get, you know, seven days or I get 30 days or 90 days of retention on my event data, but I would love to have a report that shows me uh, this trend of this data over time, and that is is exactly what one of the things we're looking to build. So, yeah, great question. Um, uh, would love to chat after that through maybe Robin or Devin, um, and we can get you hooked up with the product manager that's thinking about that. Yeah, and just uh, I, it, perhaps this was not in the question as as an assumption, but uh, in terms of saying insights is limited to only seven days, you can you working with your account team, you can extend the retention today. Um, of the event data to sort of whatever time time frame you want. You can work with your account team on that. Great, thank you guys. Um, another question is, can insights be used without infrastructure? Yeah, so I think this is a key point uh, um, for our insights product, which maybe doesn't come to light sometimes, which is if you purchase any paid product from New Relic, you get insights with it. Um, so you, let's say you're going to go out and, and purchase uh, New Relic Mobile Enterprise. Insights comes with uh, New Relic Mobile um, by default. So um, Insights is a product that we believe all our customers should be using whatever other products they're using or wherever they're instrumenting their applications um, or infrastructure. So definitely Insights can be used without infrastructure. We see our, you know, our more mature customers, our most advanced customers getting a ton of value out of Insights and they, um, they're, they're very passionate about it. So good question, thanks. Thank you guys. Um, another question, is it possible to filter the applications displayed in service maps? For example, um, could you filter by a label or name part? Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to check on that really quickly. I, I believe that you can do a search in there, um, and if that's not, uh, that's not in there today, then that's definitely something that's going to be uh, that's top of mind for service maps. There's, I just showed a preview of a couple of the things that we're we're doing with uh, service maps, but um, bringing labels, as you can see, through uh, dynamic targeting with alerts uh, through infrastructure uh, is something that is top of mind for us to be able to give uh, uh, folks, especially in DevOps, um, the ability to go have really flexible tools. So uh, there's a, there's an entire team on that. I'd have to check to see if it's available, but um, if it's not there, that's going to be that's top of mind for the uh, for the team. Great. Um, and another question, can NERPL queries be built inside Insights um, 
run the query there and create an alert from inside that interface, or must it be done in alert? Uh, yeah, great question. You can't today do that, but that's uh, one of the things that's on the, uh, Henry's the product manager. He works really tightly with Devin. That's uh, on the roadmap uh, to, uh, to be able to create those alert conditions from within insights, within inside of insights. Uh, today, there is a, an integration that goes the other way. So uh, you may have noticed on the alerts interface, you can you know, test out a query and then actually view that query inside of insights. And one of the things we'll be looking to do is obviously bring it, let that flow the other way. So you can be in, inside of insights have a, a query that you're running and click a button to create an alert out of that. Awesome. Another question that we have from um, our participants is can we can you categorize without infrastructure without the infrastructure product? I think if the, if the assumption is that uh, is in that probably this is the label question and yeah I think um, Labels you can see um, in APM, and yep. yeah. So there's a yeah. We didn't we didn't highlight it today, and it's probably worth uh, having a, a Sh Sean or a Victor come out. Uh, the product managers they're working on that are working on service maps and something that we're calling the health map, and that's um, giving folks the ability to have that same uh, the same flexible controls over that you have today with infrastructure uh, for APM. So you'd be able to go in and say, you know, I want to see the status of of all my applications um, that are labeled with, um, you know, tier equals front end and uh, and environment equals production, and then see the cluster of those applications um, in a in a high high density view. Um, so that would be uh, worth us. Uh, that's something that we're working on right now, uh, and likely would be something that we should uh, we should highlight in an upcoming webinar. Awesome. So um, this is going to probably be our last question, and if we don't get to your questions, we'll definitely reach out and um, follow up with people who have questions that need answered, um, need, still need to be answered. Will you be able to reset baseline data when you intentionally make a change um, that, say, reduces CPU utilization or response time? Yeah, you know, we don't have that ability today. Uh, so we've got, uh, we've got, uh, I believe, a couple hundred customers that are uh, in the uh, are using baselines today. Um, and so there's a, a number of uh, feature requests that have come up. Um, so that doesn't exist today. But um, uh, if uh, whoever that person was, if you want to contact uh, Robin or Devin, um, we'll get you hooked up with the product manager. We'd love to have um, uh, talk about that use case with you. Great, thank you. Uh, so we'll we'll sneak in one last question. Are these new alerting features available for both New Relic legacy alerting and the new alerts? Yeah, great question. So uh, all of these features are uh, New Relic. Uh, they're only for the uh, the new alerting platform. Um, and, and going forward, we uh, every single feature we develop for alerting will be for the new alerting platform. Great. Thank you guys so much. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Devin Cheevers, our from Product Marketing and Aaron Johnson, VP of Product Management. Um, if you want to continue this conversation on using New Relic for digital intelligence, be sure to visit our community at discuss.newrelic.com. Also, you can uh, reach out to me if you have additional questions. You can find me on Twitter at datanotrobin or um, rjordan at newrelic.com, and we'll be happy to get you in touch and, and get answers to all of your questions. So thank you guys so much, and um, we hope to see you at our next webinar.